Hello and good morning from Hamburg in the north of Germany. Now today we'll be travelling with Deutsche Bahn aboard one of their high speed intercity express services right down to the south of Germany to Munich. Books a first class ticket for today, we're going to be on board for about six hours so I'm um, just going to make the uh, walk across the road to the station Hamburg Altona and yeah let's go to Munich. Located in the Altona region of the city the rather aptly named Hamburg Altona is the northern terminus of a lot of Germany's north-south long distance trains. The station originally opened in 1844, with the current rather dingy building dating from the late 1970s. While still an important station within Hamburg, and indeed the wider German rail network, there are several plans to either close or relocate the station within the next decade or so, but nothing is confirmed as of yet. As seems to be a reoccurring theme for many German stations, there is a rather good selection of shops and takeaways at your disposal, both within the station and in the immediate surrounding area, although I'm planning on saving my appetite for the onboard restaurant. Just behind me there's direct interchange access to Hamburg's network of S-Bahn suburban trains, with these serving the station on a very frequent basis. The station is all quite open to the elements, which isn't so great on a freezing cold February morning, but as you can see, you should have no issues whatsoever finding the platforms. All of the mainline platforms are terminus platforms. As a result, most long distance trains serving the station either start or finish their journeys here. Anyway, time to head over to the platform and await the arrival of our chariot to Munich. Currently occupying our platform is this Ice 4 set, bound for Effjord via Berlin. The ultra-modern Ice 4s are the latest addition to Deutsche Bahn's high-speed fleet, having entered service in 2017, and are honestly one of my favourite types of trains out there. I covered the Ice 4 in a previous review, which you'll find in the top right corner of the screen now. And yes, I know the abbreviation for Intercity Express is technically supposed to be pronounced as ICA, but we English speakers can sometimes be a bit lazy, and we usually just refer to it as ICE, so that's how I shall be pronouncing it here on out. Our train pulls in fresh from the depot, about 20 minutes prior to departure. The trip down to Munich today will be aboard an ICE 1 set. As the name suggests, these were the first type of train to start serving Germany's high speed network. Built by Siemens, they first entered service with Germany's national operator in 1991 and, unlike more recent iterations of ICE trains, which are generally multiple units, the ICE 1s feature a more traditional configuration with 12 passenger coaches sandwiched between two power cars. The Ice Ones have a top speed of 280 km an hour or 174 miles an hour. The service that this train will form is the Dreamliner of Ices, with our train number being Ice 787, bound for München Hauptbahnhof or Munich Central Station. Departure is scheduled for 9.44am. I must admit, I do think that the almost blocky design of the power cars looks rather cool and unique, even if it does show the train's age a bit. Anyway, time to get on board. I've reserved coach 14, seat 21, which is part of a bay of two, as I'm travelling with my girlfriend today. Deutsche Bahn let you choose where you sit from a seating plan when booking, which I think should be standard practice for train operators these days. First class on the ICE 1 is made up of a mix of compartment and open saloon seating. Now, we'll come back and take a look at what the compartments have to offer in a moment, but for now, let's head to the open saloon.
As most of the seats are in an airline style configuration, I'll show you one of these first. And you know what? Legroom is fantastic, even for 6 foot 1 me. A footrest is present here, as well as what I'm going to go out on a limb and say is possibly the world's smallest litter bin. A seat back pocket containing some literature can also be found here, as well as a large and kind of sturdy tray table. A standard EU 2 pin plug socket can be found at each and every seat, and as far as I could tell, these all worked fine. These seats feature a two step recline system. A lever can be found down the side to control one part of it, then there's a second one hidden under the seat to allow even further recline. Thanks to whoever it was who first messaged me to bring this to my attention. And the seats themselves are pretty good too, being fairly comfortable and nicely shaped. Last few features, each seat also has access to a reading light, coat hooks and a window blind. And here's what our Bay of Two looks like. Essentially the same features here, except the tray table is swapped out for this rather nice wooden fold out table. And there's a much bigger bin too. And, as promised, here's what to expect from the compartments. As is pretty much standard for first class, each compartment features six seats, and these are pretty much the same as the ones found in the open saloon. The main benefits of the compartments is that they offer quite a few more perks and a bit more privacy, providing you or your group can get one to yourself, that is. Anyway, as we'll soon be setting off, let's just take a quick look at our route for today. We'll be pretty much travelling the full length of Germany today, heading via the likes of Hanover, Wurzburg and Nuremberg before arriving into Munich for a total distance travelled of 962 kilometres or 597 miles. Scheduled travel time today is 5 hours and 59 minutes, and our top speed will be 280 km an hour. And it's an on-time departure from Hamburg-Altona, as we begin our journey south at just before quarter to ten. You only really begin to comprehend just how long the ice ones are when it rounds a curve and you see it all stretching out in front of you. Each train set is 558 metres or 1,175 feet long and has capacity for around 700 passengers across two classes of comfort. The first little bit of our journey will take us across the city of Hamburg, calling at a number of stations along the way, such as here at Damtour station. By far the most notable Hamburg station we call up though is Hamburg Hauptbahnhof. This is Germany's busiest railway station, serving around 196 million passengers per year prior to the pandemic, and is only second to Paris Gare du Nord in the whole of Europe. The majority of passengers joining the train in Hamburg board here, and as such, it's quite a bit busier after this.
heißt, einmal bitte die FFP2 Maske bis Göttingen und dann wieder ab Würzburg bis München die FFP2 Maske. Und wir haben in den After a brief stop at Hamburg Harburg, bit of a tongue twister that one, we'll run non-stop for over an hour to Hanover. However, it won't be until after Hanover that we hit top speed, although we will cruise at a cool 200 kilometers an hour or 124 miles an hour until then. One nice touch was that the crew came round handing out these rather tasty chocolates at various points of the trip. Hanover Hauptbahnhof is up next. This is a major interchange with the north-south services meeting with the east-west services to the likes of Berlin, Leipzig, Cologne, Dortmund and Dusseldorf as well as international intercity trains to Amsterdam. From Hanover, we join the Hanover to Würzburg high-speed line. Opening in 1991, this was the first ever high-speed railway line in Germany, being purpose-built for the then-new Ice One trains. Parts of this line will allow us to achieve our top speed of 280 km an hour. Right, time for a wonder. The three first class coaches closest to the power car all feature the same layout, with a mix of compartments and open saloon seating. This is coach 12, which is the first class quiet coach. Coaches 2 and 4 are its second class counterparts. In my opinion, the interiors give off an almost futuristic vibe, despite their age that is. To me, they remind me a bit of something from the likes of Star Wars or Star Trek. In addition to more first class seating, Coach 9 is also where you'll find wheelchair spaces, as well as the train manager's office and a large accessible toilet. Separating the two classes of travel is the board restaurant. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't think of any other high-speed services out there where a proper sit-down restaurant service is offered on board. So this is somewhat a unique feature of Germany's Intercity Express trains. Beyond this is second class, which features a mix of six-seater compartments, albeit with a different type of seat to the first class ones as well as a 2 plus 2 open saloon layout. The Ice Ones were last refurbished between 2005 and 2008, bringing the onboard experience more or less in line with what you can expect on the likes of the Ice Free and the Ice Tea. So if you'd like to see a more in-depth look at the second class offering, be sure to check out the video in the top right corner of the screen now. I think it's lunchtime. All passengers can access the restaurant, with first class passengers also having the option of having their food served at their seat. Mm. 
I went for the Currywurst, accompanied by a rather nice Erdinger wheat beer, while my better half opted for the Hungarian style goulash. Everything tasted rather good, and the prices, which I've put on screen for you, weren't too bad neither. While eating lunch, we pulled into Kassel, with notable sites here being a couple of medieval churches and Bergpark Wilhelmsir, which is Europe's largest hillside park and, since 2013, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now I think it really is quite an experience sitting in a restaurant and eating while the world whizzes on by at 280 kilometers an hour. Now, you didn't think I'd forgotten, did you? On the way back to my seat, I headed for the obligatory loo review and was pleased to find that they were pretty clean, well stocked and, you guessed it, in good working order. <music> Lastly, this train is Wi-Fi enabled, which can also be used to access the onboard entertainment portal. That said, with speeds like this, it might as well have not been. I will say that the ride quality, while not necessarily bad, is certainly inferior to more recent versions of the ice. My main complaint would have to be in relation to the vibrations, which are particularly noticeable while travelling at high speeds. At about half past one, we arrive at the end of our first stretch of high speed line in the city of Vorsberg. Schönen guten Tag und herzlich willkommen im ICE nach München mit Halt in Nürnberg und Ingolstadt. From here, we'll join the Nuremberg to Vorsberg railway meaning we're once again limited to 200 kilometers an hour. An hour later and we arrive at Nuremberg Hauptbahnhof. The city is of course famous and probably best known internationally for the Nuremberg Trials, which were held here just after the Second World War. From Nuremberg, we join the Nuremberg to Munich high speed line which will allow us to cover the last 171 kilometers or 106 miles of our journey in around an hour. About three quarters of an hour prior to arriving into Munich, we arrive at Ingolstadt, our final intermediate stop. Wow. 
So, some final thoughts. For a 30 year old train, these Ice One sets really aren't bad at all. Deutsche Bahn have done an excellent job at ensuring there's a high degree of consistency regarding the onboard experience across their fleet of high speed trains, meaning you'll still get the same fantastic experience as on newer trains, such as the Ice Free. Another aspect I thought that was fantastic was the price. I paid €26.90 for my one way first class ticket, booking about a month in advance. Considering that this is for a journey covering the better part of 1000 kilometers or 600 miles on a high speed train in first class, I think that represents rather exceptional value for money. I had been wanting to try out Germany's original high speed train for ages, and it would certainly appear to have been worth the wait, but what did you make of the experience? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. We pull into München Hauptbahnhof on time at 15.43, which is somewhat of a rarity for Deutsche Bahn's ice services, at least in my experience. So, oh, welcome to Munich. Um, we actually arrived on time in the end as well, which um, I don't know about other people who have been using Deutsche Bahn's ice services, but it's a bit of a rarity if I'm being honest. But no, the ride was pretty comfortable overall. Those um, ice ones, they are showing the age a bit and they are a bit rattly, but overall it's still the same high level of service you get on the other ice trains. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to help us out by giving it a like. If you're new to the channel, then you're going to want to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Monday and Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.